GAMS and MATLAB, GDX MRW tools, RGDX and WGDX. In this video, we will use GDX MRW facilities, RGDX and WGDX. RGDX stands for Read GDX File, WGDX stands for Write GDX File. We will use the GAMS model library example transport to demonstrate the facilities. Furthermore, we will show how to specify data in sparse and dense form. Open MATLAB. Note that in another video we show how to set up MATLAB for GAMS. In the command window type system GAMS lib transport. This retrieves the transport model from the GAMS model library. Type edit transport.gms to open the GAMS program in an editor. Type edit transport underscore driver dot m to open the MATLAB script in an editor. To see both files simultaneously, go to menu View and click left right. Let's write the input data for the GAMS model in MATLAB. We will create a GDX file in MATLAB and then read the GDX file in GAMS. Before we start, it is a good idea to have a clear view on what we want to see in the GDX file. One way to do this is to create a GDX file in GAMS, perhaps from a minimal sample of the real data. Then read the data into MATLAB in order to get a good understanding of the data structure that we want to write with WGDX. Note that the data structures in RGDX and WGDX are very similar. In our case, we can simply run the transport model and view the resulting GDX file. This will help us to get an understanding of how the GDX file that we want to create should look like. Type system GAMS transport LO equal 3 GDX equal temp. Then type GDX info temp in order to see the GDX file content. We can observe that a set label in GAMS can be alphabetic, hence an index GDX file with its numeric labels may not be sufficient in all cases. Type help WGDX in order to see the syntax for using WGDX. We can see that there are several fields to be specified in order to write a symbol with WGDX. Let's start by typing clear all into our MATLAB program. This will give a fresh start when we run the MATLAB script. Then we write set i into a GDX file. Type i.name equal i. The first i is the name for the MATLAB symbol. The second i is the set name for the GAMS symbol in the GDX file. Then type i.uels equal Seattle comma San Diego. This defines the unique element labels, in other words, the set elements for set i. We can do similarly for set j. Now let's write the set symbols into a GDX file with WGDX and view the content. Type WGDX m to g i comma j. We separate the MATLAB symbols with commas and observe that we simply write the symbols without surrounding them with quotes. Type GDX info m to g and run the MATLAB script. We can see that we have written set i with unique element labels Seattle and San Diego into a GDX file. Now let's also write the parameters into the GDX file. Type a.name equal a. Then type a.val equal 350 and 600. Write symbol A into the GDX file and run the MATLAB script. We can see that we have written a two-dimensional set with label 350 and 600. This is not what we wanted. Specify the field type to parameter in order to write a parameter instead of a set. Now we obtain a one-dimensional parameter with set element 350 that has the value 600. This is not what we wanted. Specify that we give data in full form, also called dense form. This means that every value specified in the val field contains a parameter entry. Now we obtain a one-dimensional parameter with labels 1 and 2 
that has the values 350 and 600. Let's replace the unique element labels 1 and 2 with the set labels Seattle and San Diego by specifying the UELs field. Let's run the MATLAB script and observe that we have obtained a one-dimensional parameter A with labels Seattle and San Diego that has the values 350 and 600 in the GDX file. Let's now specify parameter B, but this time in sparse form. I copy-paste the symbol A and adjust the symbol for parameter B. I set the UELs to set J. This time we write the symbol in sparse form. In the val field, when writing in sparse form, we specify to which index position we want to write to and then the value. For example, we can specify the first and last entry and run the MATLAB script. We observe that we did not need to specify the elements that we did not want to write. In dense form, we would need to specify a zero for those data entries that are not present in the data. In case the input data has values only for a fraction of the set labels or label combinations, then the sparse form is more efficient because we do not need to write a large number of zeros. However, let us continue and add the missing data entry for parameter B. Now let's write parameter D into the GDX file. Parameter D has two dimensions. Therefore, we specify both I and J in the UELs field. We can copy paste the data from the table in the GAMS program. Note that the GAMS keyword table defines a parameter but expects the parameter definition to be in table format. If we specify the parameter D in sparse form, then we add the index position for I and J in front of the data value that we are specifying. Hence, each data entry starts with two index positions, followed by the data value, when we specify a two-dimensional parameter in sparse form. We separate each data entry with a semicolon, or end of line. We can then run the MATLAB script and view the result. However, we observe that, in this case, the data is completely dense. This means that each combination of i and j has a value. Therefore, it makes sense to write parameter d in dense form. Hence, for this dataset, it is proper to give the data in dense form. Finally, we specify the scalar f. Be aware that a scalar is a parameter that has the dimension 0. Now, let's turn to the GAMS program and specify that we want to read the data from the GDX file that we have created in MATLAB. We first remove the data specification section from the GAMS program. Then we specify set i and j and afterwards parameters a, b, d and f. Note that we separate the symbols with a comma. We include the domain information i and j in order to allow domain checking in GAMS. Then we read in the GDX file m2g at compile time. We use $load and specify the domains i and j as well as the parameters a, b, d, f that we want to read from the GDX file. Now let's turn over to the MATLAB script and call the GAMS program. Type system GAMS transport lo equal 3 GDX G to M. Then type GDX who's G to M in order to see an overview of the GDX file content that contains the result of the GAMS run. Let's say that we want to read the shipment quantities X from GAMS to MATLAB. Type help rgdx. Then type in the MATLAB script X dot name equal X. This defines the MATLAB structure X that has the field name which holds the value x. The value x is the symbol name that rgdx looks for in the gdx file. Then type x equal rgdx g to m x. This overwrites x with the x that resides in the gdx file. We then run the MATLAB script and view the returned fields for structure x. 
we see that the ULs has two dimensions with five labels in each dimension. We can specify the field compress equal true in order to remove the UELs that are not used by variable x. We then type x.uels1 to display the UELs in the first dimension. We then specify x.uels2 to display the UELs in the second dimension. Furthermore, we specify x.val to display the value field of structure x. We run the MATLAB script. From the result, we can, for example, see that we should ship 275 cases of cans from San Diego to Topeka. In summary, in this video, we have modified the transport example so that the input data is read from MATLAB and the GAMS output is read into MATLAB. We have accomplished this by using RGDX and WGDX. We have used sparse and dense form when writing into a GDX file. Furthermore, we have read and displayed some of the GAMS run result in MATLAB.